And as always, we remain your election headquarters. We know that it's only 42 days to the election. For many of you, six weeks. And uh, you can always get interactive with us throughout the rest of this very electioneering on Facebook, join us on TV, uh, through our WhatsApp platform 0560 800,000, and on Twitter handle, uh, join us on TV. But we we'll want to know what really is happening in the various regions from our correspondent um, as to what is happening uh, on the campaign trail for many of the political parties already in the newspapers. We have a lot more going uh, for the political parties, even the Electoral Commission and even the courts or the justice system, making sure that they register themselves. But uh, Rafiq Salam uh, is uh, on the line from the Upper West region. Uh, where are you currently, Rafiq? I'm currently in the Upper West regional capital, wow. uh, the heart of the Upper West region. Wow. Mm -hmm. but, but what really has been going on uh, from the last week to, to, to today? Um, uh, for the past uh, couple of weeks, I must tell you that it was the NDC uh, that was busiest uh, in the region. Uh, with the launch of uh, the uh, campaigns uh, for the 11 constituencies uh, in the Upper West Region. Uh, they started with Jirapa. Uh, uh, they, that's where we have an independent candidate uh, uh, leading uh, the pack there. And then also from there, they moved to the other constituencies. And so they wrap up all their constituency campaign uh, launched uh, last Saturday uh, with Rashid Pilpu, uh uh, uh, being confirmed as a party parliamentary candidate, also uh, launching his campaign uh, to lead the NDC uh, in the West Central constituency. And so, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, a couple of days ago, uh, we were at Sola, we were at Tona, we were at uh, uh, Bode, uh, which is close to the Upper West Region, where the two constituencies of the NDC also launched uh, their campaign. So, uh, two days ago, there was a mammoth rally at the hometown of President Mahama where the NDC candidate, uh, Yusuf Suleimani, popular known as uh, Ori, uh, was, was, his campaign was launched at that particular constituency. Now, particularly, well, we know that for many of the candidates there, um, ra um, the, Dr. Rashid Popo is the one who remains the most popular, was central. Um, how, how good is he to go for the election? How safe is he? Um, you know, we haven't done any research uh, regarding... Uh, uh, whether Rashid will be able to retain uh, his seat or not. But uh, from the look of things, uh, uh, you know, in order for the MPP uh, to beat uh, the NDC or for Isako Tairu, a moment, the 39 year old uh, uh, accountant who is contesting against uh, Rashid Pelpo, for him to beat him, he needs to work above himself. You know, this is a traditional and NDC seat starting from 1992 up to now. You remember this constituency uh, used to be part of the World West constituency, uh, but it was split uh, somewhere around 2004. And so it has remained an NDC And uh, You know, but looking uh, from the past records, uh, from the past records, the NDC has always been having this particular seat as a safety. But you know, if you also look at the records, uh, the MPP seems to be growing, even though they are not winning that particular uh, uh, seat. And then, and then also the dynamics sometimes also change. You know, since 2004, uh, this is the only time that Rashid Pelpo, Dr. Rashid, uh, I must say, is meeting a candidate for a second time, like the MPP candidate. In all the other, 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 other situations, uh, you know, uh, one, once the person contests him and then the election, and then the person is changed. And so, uh, time of moment is going to give Rashid Pelpo a good run, uh, for his money. Hmm, okay, uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. And, and uh, what will be happening for the rest of the week? Do we have uh, the other parties, uh, particularly the MPP, also trying to uh, again recommence their campaign activities in, in many of the notable uh, what, what we know from the MPP, they seem to be on the quiet, and then uh, they seem to play their, their game, uh, play their cards closer to their chest. Uh, you know, they, they are not telling us what they are doing. But secretly, they are saying that they at least they will be able to win uh, over 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 fifty percent of the of the of the of the seats in the upper west region. We are talking upper west have eleven constituencies, and when we talk about eleven constituencies, and we, if we are talking about more than fifty percent, clearly means that we are talking about six seats in the upper west region. And so, at the moment, the regional chairman of the MPP, Alaji Abu Bakar Abdurrahman, so is leading a team, and they are also touring at the region. But these ones, they are doing it on the quiet, and then uh, uh, for them. Uh, for them, they don't. Uh, for them, some few 
are things that are, that they are doing, uh, which is on radio or on television, but uh, most of it is always behind others. But just a few days ago, Cabo also launched his campaign, Anthony Abay Fakabo, uh, former national youth organizer of the MPP. You know, he's contesting the Laura seat, and then uh, where he will pitch his strength against Billy Zeden, former acting general secretary of the NDC, a former deputy minister and former regional minister. And also there's an incumbent member of parliament. You know, the incumbent member is from the NDC, Samson Asibi Abu. Uh, he's also contesting. And so it's going to be an interesting seat. It's going to be an interesting constituency to look up to. We'll see how that goes. And uh, we wish you all the best for the day and for the rest of the week as well, Rafiq. Thank you very we much. We have to go I'm to the Volta good. region and Fred Kwame Asari. Uh, particularly for the Volta region, we know the MPP um, have their uh, flag bearer, Nanado Danko Kufado, visiting many of uh, the constituencies in the Volta region. And uh, Fred, so far, how has the reception been for the MPP flag bearer? Uh, Roland, uh, Nanado began his uh, tour of the Volta region. Uh, yesterday, where he visited five constituencies, North and South Dine, Afaja to South, Bando constituency, and then Diakuye. I must say that the reception uh, has been uh, very overwhelming. Uh, Nanado visited Vakbo, Peki, Have, Amfuega, and then Bando. Speaking uh, at two rallies, that is Peki and Have, he told the people that, yes, he has said that voter reason really needs change, uh, considering the number of them that came out to listen to his message. And then from there, he moved to the Pandu uh, constituency, where hundreds of uh, residents lined up the streets to welcome him. Uh, he spoke to them at a rally, uh, assuring them that when they trust him and then give him the mandate or vote him uh, to become the president of the country, he will never disappoint them and that he will do everything possible to improve uh, their lives. From there, we went to the Akuya constituency where uh, Nanado uh, visited uh, Nkunya uh, and then he spoke to uh, residents there uh, as well. And then also in Abotuasi, I might say that we got to Abotuasi about 10 p.m., but then people were still gathered in their numbers. I spoke to some of the residents and they told me that they've been waiting for Nana Ado uh, from midday just to hear his message of change. So that uh, has been uh, the reception. It was very overwhelming. And then I should say that people in the Volta region are gradually to the NDC. And then if the numbers that we uh, witnessed yesterday should uh, uh, vote and uh, Akufuado, uh, votes for the NPP would increase in the Volta region. Mm. And uh, we were getting a report that chiefs were endorsing Nana um, Adodanku uh, Akufuado. How, how true are those reports? Uh, yes, yeah, it's very true. His first stop, that is Peki, uh, he visited or he spoke and interacted with chiefs and people of Peki, where one chief uh, of Peki, uh, Jopati, he goes by the name Dobby Agamale the Sixth. And he mentioned that, well, people believe, or people say that everybody in the Volta region uh, is for the NDC. But he says, no, that is not the case. Some people also uh, believe and support the NPP. And then he threw his support uh, behind the NPP, and then they are candidates, they are presidential candidates. He mentioned that over the years, people uh, of Peki, believed in the NPP, and then he is optimistic that should Nanado become the president of the country, uh, he will help solve the numerous challenges communities in his area are facing. Well, thank you very much, Fred Kwame Asari, giving us um, an insight into uh, where, where um, Nanado Dankwe Kufado has been visiting so far. But are you still on the line, Fred? Okay, we seem to have lost him. Oh, Fred? Fred? Okay, he's gone. All right. Uh, so that'll be it. Um, we've been doing our constituency watch, uh, regional trails, looking at what our correspondents also have been picking on the round as far as the election uh, campaigning is concerned. Uh, right now, Nanado Dankwe Kufuado is uh, in the Volta region, touring many of the co uh, constituencies there, but we'll bring you a lot more update on that. We'll have to take a break. When we come back, we'll bring you entertainment to wrap up for the show for the morning.